starting your digital pathology journey and asking yourself which scanner to choose, search no more. In this video, you will learn how to choose a whole slide scanner that's tailored to your needs. Hi, I'm Alexandra Zhurev and I'm here to help you do better digital pathology. So if you're looking for resources about all things digital pathology, this is your place, the digital pathology place. Be sure to subscribe, click the bell below and be notified every time I release a new video. This video is based on a blog post, which is based on a podcast episode where I had a guest who was talking exactly about that, how to choose the perfect scanner for your digital pathology needs. So let's dive into it. So here we are at the digital pathology place, and I'm going to tell you how to choose a whole slide imaging scanner for digital pathology that's perfect for you. So what you have to do, you have to actually ask yourself a couple of questions. And there are 10 questions that you have to ask yourself. And if you want a list of those questions, there is a PDF with this. If you have your digital pathology file folder, then go ahead and download this PDF. I'm going to link to this in the description below as well. But let's go through all those questions. So number one, what is your budget and your throughput? So those two things, budget and throughput, go hand in hand. And that's why you have to ask this question together. Because your budget can limit your throughput or the other way around. Your throughput, if you have to scan many slides a day, uh, will determine your budget. So basically, how much does it cost and how many slides per day do I need to or do I want to scan? This is the first thing you ask yourself. The second thing you're going to be asking yourself is what is your intended use now and in the future? And the key thing here is in the future. Why is it so important to ask now what you're going to be doing in the future? Because those devices cost a lot of money. So you have to think ahead. And the intended use here refers to whether you're going to be working mostly with normal h &E slides or other special stains, but bright field microscopy, or do you want to do immunofluorescence? Which one is going to be the majority? Is it going to be majority of diagnostics, h &E and bright field? Or are you doing a lot of research that requires immunofluorescence. Or another thing that may happen is at the moment you only do H&E and bright field, but you want to have the option to add fluorescence in the future. And there are options, there are scanners like that, but you have to ask yourself this question. The third question is, what is the demand in your organization? So the demand in your department is one thing. Often when an organization gets a scanner, buys a scanner, um, other departments learn about it and they are very interested in using this scanner. So it suddenly becomes a lot more popular than originally anticipated. And then the initial throughput is not the real throughput anymore and you probably end up with not enough scanning power. So be sure to check what is the demand on scanning outside of your department if other departments are going to be using it or not and what's the situation there. You don't want to end up with just the right scanner, just with the right throughput and everything perfect for you and then end up sharing it with everybody else. The next question is how much space do you have in the lab for your scanner? Where can you put it? So why is it important to check where you can put your scanner? Scanners are pretty high precision devices and every movement, every shake can influence the scanning quality. So equipment such as freezers, centrifuges, or any other equipment in the lab that causes vibrations can negatively affect the scanning quality. So check if you can like carve out a special space for the scanner where nothing is interrupting. Often uh, there is extra equipment coming with the scanner, hardware like computers or monitors. You need to have space for that and you need to have all this, especially the scanner unit, isolated from any vibration. The fifth question is, what size of pathology scans do you want to scan? 
So the standard traditional size is three times one inches or 75 millimeters times 25 millimeters. This is the normal slide. If you're working with different size of specimen, then you need to have a scanner that can accommodate that. Often scanners can do both, but you have to check for that. Sometimes you can join two regular slide spaces into a big space and place the big slide there, but you have to definitely check, especially if you're working with brain samples, bone samples, or anything that's bigger than a standard slice, then uh, you need to find that out before you buy a scanner. Another very basic but super important question is what magnification will you be scanning at? For anatomic pathology, the question is reduced between 20x or 40x. Which one do you need? But if you are working with cytology specimens, you're going to be thinking of objectives or magnifications as high as 100x. And you're also going to be thinking, okay, what do I do with the focus for cytology specimen? Do I need Z stacking or is there some smart way of focusing? Here again, intended use determines the answer to this question, so be sure to ask this question. Our question number seven and very important aspect is, is this just a whole slate scanner or does it come with additional equipment? And what do I mean by additional equipment? Before actually thinking about going digital, there is this misconception that you get a scanner and you can go digital. Well, there is a little bit more to going digital than just the scanner. There is the slide viewer. There might be the necessity for a high resolution and high refresh rate monitor. And maybe a specific mouse for slide viewing, like those space mouses that you can get with slide viewing software. Then what about image management system? Does this come with the scanner or do you have to think about it separately? So now instead of just comparing scanners, you might need to do market research about image management system, viewers, and different things that, that are necessary to do your job in the most efficient way. Question eight, how do you want to interact with the whole slate scanner? We are getting a little bit more fancy. Why do I say fancy? Well, we already know the throughput, we already know the magnification and everything, but how do we want to interact with this machine? Do we want to load it and leave it alone? Are we okay with reloading? Maybe you just need a single slide scanner where you just put one slide for scanning if this is the need of your lab. This is the most cumbersome option and the fully automated is the easiest, but maybe you need the flexibility to be able to do everything, like slide one scan when you want to stop a batch of slides or do a partial batch of slide. So this is what you need to ask yourself as well. Question number nine, how easy is it to scan the slides? This question may not seem so crucial, but actually it is because life in the lab can get very, very busy and every click matters. So how easy is it to scan the slide? Is it, does it take five clicks? or two clicks, because this multiplied by the amount of slides that you're scanning has to be fitted into the normal lab workflow. So it better be easy to use if we wanna use it at scale. Question number 10 is something that is crucial for a modern lab. How does the whole slide imaging scanner integrate with other systems in the lab? This is so important. I know I'm saying this for every question. This is the most important question, but that's why we have a list of 10. So this one is about interoperability. Scanner is not a standalone equipment and scanner and digital pathology is something that integrates multiple systems. What if you already have a different scanner and you have an image management system, are they going to be compatible? What if you have a LIMS, lab information management system? Do they need to interact? How will they interact? Maybe you want to do image analysis or automated quality controls of the scan based on image analysis. You will need an open API, application programming interface to integrate different programs. So interoperability is key. So here we have our 10 questions, but there is one bonus question. Are there any extras included in the package? Something that I don't really consider an extra, but this is something you should ask around is how is the service provided by the company? Because the company can have a fantastic product, but if you know that the service they're providing is not that great, then maybe you should look for a different product. But there is a significant amount of problem solving and troubleshooting in the digital pathology world. So if you have the product team on your side and you know that they are responsive, they're friendly, they can help you, they can learn 
what the intricacies of your lab are, this is a big plus. Other things that you will need in your digital pathology lab, so you might as well check if the scanner comes with it, are telepathology capabilities, virtual slide conferences, slide annotation capabilities, and cloud storage options. Check if this comes with your scanner because you will need this. You will need to annotate. You will need to share the slides with your colleagues. Maybe this is already covered by your image management system. Maybe not. Check what the scanner has and find the best deal out there. If you watch till the end, you are fantastic and chances are that you actually are looking for a scanner. So be sure to download the PDF so that you have this as your resource and you can make notes and write down what are your requirements for a scanner. And if you'd like to listen to the audio version, I'm going to also link to the podcast in the description below. Talk to you in the next episode.